Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 4th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Large language models like ChatGPT are, of course, all over the place, but not a lot of people are actually trying to train their own models. And the problem with these large public models like ChatGPT is that they are trained with generic data. And secondly, that anything that you post to it, any prompt that you're creating, of course, is in fact leaked to that language model. And it may not be appropriate for, for example, logs that you create internally in your network and security events to be shared with these models. So Tom looked into creating his own own model and he describes how he did it here in the latest uh, blog post and uh, some of uh, the results that he obtained with this model. Now, Tom looked at it with sort of an incident response uh, lens and essentially sort of, for example, pasted log snippets uh, to the model and then asked it what kind of attack it is. It did pretty well there. It it didn't do well with some of the other tasks like uh, writing reports and such. You can see uh, what the result was in Tom's uh, blog. Now, Tom doesn't walk you in the details of the training, but has links that will explain to you uh, how the training uh, worked and also what kind of hardware he used for uh, this particular model that he trained himself. And then we have another sort of machine learning related story, a critical vulnerability in TorchSurf. This allows for unauthenticated remote code execution. TorchSurf is used to connect a PyTorch, PyTorch being a standard library often used in Python for machine learning. And it includes a vulnerable dependency snake yaml which then exposes this entire chain to deserialization vulnerabilities of java objects updates are available so certainly something that you want to log into if you are running these components like in particular torch surf Well, it looks like today is sort of a machine learning kind of day. We have a third story here, and that's about Bing being used to read CAPTCHAs. Nothing really sort of terribly new here, but certainly kind of surprising that it works that easily. Machine learning has often been used to solve CAPTCHAs in many cases with more success than having humans solve them. But these public models like what Bing is now offering for image recognition certainly make that rather easy. Dennis Sharaev did share a prompt that solves these CAPTCHAs on Twitter. And Menlo Security did uh, document a nice a new phishing attack that uh, actually uses an open redirect in Indeed.com in order to steal Microsoft online credentials. So an open redirect is a vulnerability on a website where you're being redirected to any page the attacker chooses. In this case, the attacker is sending a link to Indeed.com, the job website, which of course is widely used and in so far somewhat trusted. But clicking on the link will immediately redirect the victim to the phishing website. Now, if they're not carefully inspecting the URL in the browser, they believe they're still on Indeed or an Indeed related page. So being redirected to something that looks like a Microsoft login page may not be all that suspicious. What makes this even kind of worse is that the attacker here used the evil proxy toolkit. So the victim is not actually being sent to the Microsoft page, but the page is just proxied by evil proxy, which of course then allows the attacker to intercept the entire 
log in and the attacker is actually not that much interested in your actual credentials, but more in the session ID coming back. Because if you're using two-factor authentication, they still would have the problem that uh, next time they log in, they do need a second uh, one-time password, uh, but uh, since they now have a session ID, they can use that to impersonate the victim without actually requiring any second factor or knowledge of the original username and password. This has been a frequently exploited issue in recent months, last couple of years, where if you are doing multi-factor authentication, it doesn't really matter if the session ID leaks in an attack like this, because once you have the session ID, well, that's really all you need in order to authenticate as the victim. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.